So let me formally uh, welcome you everyone for this seminar for overview of admission to universities outside Japan, brought to you by Indo-Japan Pulse, which is a digital platform and a social venture for Indians in Japan, which supports life, education, business, and beyond. Uh, you might ask, why this session? Uh, since we covered the topic of Japan universities uh, last time, uh, and we have covered around two to three sessions around that topic, we got a lot of queries upon uh, what is the scope outside Japan also. We would like to discuss that. And there were a lot of uh, active contributors also around this topic. So we are starting this uh, from this today's session. This would be kind of an overview session. And we see there would be more sessions coming uh, ahead in future. So before we see the agenda, let me introduce uh, the key speakers of today. Uh, today, we have two guests uh, who will be speaking on this topic. Main guest is Jimmy Devi Tokchom, who is a certified career analyst and a counselor, a certified soft skill trainer and a communication coach. Uh, with over a decade of experience, her goal is to create an impact uh, in our society and contribute to bring some relevant changes in terms of individual growth and thereby uplifting the community and also the whole country. She's a professional counselor and feel free to approach her for her services outside this seminar. Along with that, uh, my co-host and also would be a speaker on this topic, uh, Ashish Dev, who is who along with me is also co-founder of uh, Indo-Japan Pulse. And he has his own venture also, Council Navi. Council Navi is a digital platform navigating students, professionals and career counselors connecting intelligently. He is also a CCCIS certified. Uh, in his day job, he works with Ericsson and has engineering background. He will be speaking about the first half of the session, on the first half of the session, and will focus on importance of studying abroad and trends around it. Along with that, uh, myself, Prem Keswani, who will be hosting this lecture, I speak uh, in the capacity of a parent and also a professional uh, with engineering, management, and finance background. I also happen to be a co-founder of Indo-Japan Pulse along with Ashish Dev. And I also have a separate uh, social venture, Direct Bharat Se, which is also a social venture to enable all Indian across the world to procure goodies they love directly from India via online or offline stores without being dependent on anyone else. In my day job, I work as a consultant mm -hmm. with uh, EY consulting firms. So this session we do under the capacity of parents for kids living outside India, which also needs to be addressed. So this is also one of the social thing which we think uh, needs more information, more discussion around this topic. Uh, about logistics, uh, today's session, we have a hard stop at 5.30. Hence, any queries uh, need to be taken as one-to-one -one, uh, counseling sessions separately. So we will be starting to conclude by 5.25. So that was a quick intro to the guest uh, and the host. I welcome you all once again. So let's quickly see what the structure of this seminar is. Uh, for that, I pass on the baton to Ashish and take it from here, Ashish then. Thank you, Prem. Uh, thanks for this great introduction and welcome everyone to this uh, interesting session of uh, admissions outside Japan. Uh, I hope you can hear me clearly. Yes, Ashish, you are audible. OK, great. So uh, today, this is how we will be covering all the topics. So we'll start with why study abroad. Now, this is uh, this sentence uh, more likely uh, is con uh, considered from India to uh, abroad or overseas perspective. But I think uh, it's the same uh, logic applicable even for Japan, like uh, students from Japan when going to other countries, uh, maybe including India, then it's like why study abroad kind of aspect we need to think of. Uh, then next point uh, we will be covering is uh, popular study destinations, like beyond Japan, uh, what are those uh, popular destinations where students likely to go for uh, their undergraduate or postgraduate studies and programs. And then uh, whichever countries we uh, we will talk about, like uh, what are the general intake seasons? Like there are different seasons in each country. Uh, so uh, we will explain that part. 
so more over these three topics i'll cover and then from uh, next like from the application and counseling perspective which is uh, is a quite a detailed topic but an overview will be covered by today uh, jimmy will cover that overview um, going abroad for education itself is a big project both for students and for parents so uh, jimmy has uh, compiled a lot of uh, good information more over overview point of view but i think it's very very useful for everyone in this session now let's look into why study abroad so there are general reasons uh, one is world class education so definitely when in japan we have a lot of good universities but when i am speaking in the context of world class education moreover we will relate that to english speaking courses and the countries where these courses are possible so uh, there are a lot of uh, countries or i'll speak about those countries later where this kind of uh, uh, where world class education is popularly known specifically there are a lot of uh, top class universities institutes like ivy league and so on uh, and also uh, these kind of countries exposed to lot of different cultures for example if we talk about uh, culture in america or uk australia so there are different cultures where students will get exposed to so that is also one of the good reason to get exposed to different cultures and understand uh, from those cultures uh, both from social also from uh, educational or business culture point of view also when students go and study in some other countries it adds lot of value it creates a, a kind of a differentiator showing Uh, a kind of a, a different perspective to the employers uh, also as there are uh, very good universities institutions so adding those uh, like adding those into your cv creates a different credit to the cv itself a uh, very important aspect is uh, research options because when you go outside uh, you will be able to work with a uh, scientist though those scientists can be your professors uh, you you can work with different research projects so huge exposure towards uh, students who wants to go for research kind of options uh, it's it's a really uh, a good benefit and there are a lot of extended career opportunities like post work opportunities post work uh, pw which is called or uh, like immigration options uh, then uh, different job uh, possibilities visa options uh, likely to stay in different countries uh, so these kind of a lot of extended career opportunities are possible uh, as we are in japan definitely uh, from indian student perspective uh, we are learning japanese but at the same time uh, there are countries like europe you can learn different languages like german spanish and so on so there are chances uh, if you select or go for countries with different languages so you can learn different languages as well so these are couple of uh, general reasons but from students perspective there are more compelling reasons for example independence like when uh, a student staying with their parents it's a very different atmosphere but when they go on their own to different countries they have to carry themselves independently lot of aspects can be learned uh, with that and that that creates a different personality altogether so this independence is a, is another very important compelling reason uh, you have to manage yourself everything right from who you are talking to who you are uh, like learning from who you like buying uh, procuring so many things like uh, staying uh, changing the locations uh, traveling different locations in different countries so you are the owner of your life and that also adds to the personality development of a student uh post graduation degree from a different country always uh, is a uh, taken differently for example Uh, a student who is in japan but getting a, a, a post graduation degree or graduation degree from a different country will definitely represent uh, differently to the employers even in japan or anywhere so that's another uh, merit uh, very one very good important uh, one aspect that uh, a student can develop is networking alumni because these days uh, network is very important uh it's not about when you are into college or university or institute making just friends but after passing after so many years you will see whatever network you were part of 
has gone to a different level and then uh, you can definitely encash that network in different ways in the sense of business or marketing sales education so there are a lot of things a lot of benefits around this and uh, it definitely gives chance to work in a broad company and certainly when you are going abroad you are studying in different countries it impacts your people skills in a positive sense so it can improve uh, certainly your people skills and definitely if you say a student that you can go and study some other country then definitely they will have a smile on their phone face because it's a fun so yeah definitely it has to be managed but it's it's certainly a fun for students so these are a couple of uh, compiling reasons and if i have to talk about popular study destinations then this is uh, from the indian students going abroad point of view because honestly we don't have any data from japan to how many students go gone to which country kind of so it is taken from the indian perspective so in 2019 almost 1 million students went abroad in different countries then due to covid it went down but again uh, it it started shooting up and now it's like expected to have almost 2 million students indian students studying in different countries and if you see overall uh, how much expense it could be then it's like 70 billion which is huge so if you look from the 2 million point of view almost 35 dollar per student is spent so it's quite a financial uh, uh, kind of a consideration also uh, you need to keep in mind when you think about any other countries other than japan uh most popular destinations are obviously united states uh, because uh, that that is what we generally hear also um, earlier it was like a australia on the second but now canada is moving because they want more students so there are a lot of waivers lot of fee waivers lot of scholarships and all those schemes are also coming up third in line is united kingdom uk fourth is australia but then there are different other countries also in line like germany ireland singapore russia even new zealand uh, even uh, students from india are also considering these days japan and other countries around so these are popular destinations and let's talk about intake seasons in various countries so starting with us so there are two main intake seasons intake means when the student will be joining into that particular institute so fall is one and spring is one so it's august and september and january uh, uk is again fall and spring but for fall, fall it's september october and spring january canada is september and january australia there is a little challenge for example if a student is in uh, 12th just went into 12th then the admission will be in 2026 february so one year has Uh, the student has to wait because their intake is february so wh whoever is in uh, right now 12th cannot go in just in february into the any institute uh, in australia so need to wait for one year so that is 2026 so they have generally february and july they have some options like october but those are very limited then germany is winter which is october and summer france is again september january new zealand february july and netherlands september february so each country they have their own intake sessions intake seasons so i think with this i'll stop my presentation but then i'll hand over it to jimmy uh, jimmy to you now right thank you so much uh, ashish and uh, good afternoon everyone hello prem that's the first time we are meeting up uh, thank you everyone for joining in and giving me this privilege to uh, present this small uh, presentation today I hope this will be little uh, beneficial for you as a parents to think, and if your children is in and around, probably they can also attend, and uh, you know they can think about what needs to be done next. So as we say that it will be very brief, and I will start with application and counselling. This is just like we as a parent moving to some other place, and for the student, obviously, with their aims and vision and mission in their life. So the first thing the children have to decide is very obviously which country they may be having a dream country with their dream program the uh, you know studies that they want to pursue so obviously they have to check which country is good for them so this is a vast list vast homework they have to do on that and also the programs so there could be a, you know subject combination when i do lots of counseling for international studies i see that children are interested in some but they don't have those subject in 10 plus 2 over here so there are challenges 
So we always try to upgrade their skills one or the other way, probably with the certifications and all, so that they can apply for the further studies. So a child have to understand what program they are interested in, what is the program available in that particular university that they are targeting. That's the first course of action, a homework that has to be done. Then obviously, the general requirements, so everybody is aware. These days, the children are much smarter than us. They take their you know, exams, yeah, their test, their skills test, and everything side by side when they are in their class 12th. That's what I have experienced in my counseling session, that they are much more forward than what we are. So general requirement is important. Uh, also, along with that, a child must be aware of what is the cost factor. It's not that they are aiming for, for me, I mean, if I say that I, I love to be in the US, but I have to see the pocket of my parents as well. And parents at the same time, uh, you all being NRIs and you know, in a good position, I'm sure you will be able to afford. But if somebody, some relatives and all are in India, there could be a problem. So cost is a factor. And we as a counselor, we assist them how to do the financing, budgeting of their education abroad. So nothing to worry about it. Just adjust that I'm saying this should be in your mind when you think about a destination, the program. Is the program affordable or not? What is the cost? And the cost is not limited to the program only. The cost is entirely about staying there for two years, three years, five years, what so on. But yes, at least that needs to be budgeted. Uh, finance should be manageable before you discuss all these things next step, taking forward to the next step. So are you ready for the change and the challenges? As Ashish has already discussed about the changes, you know, adaptability will be there. Your personal, individually, are you, will you be able to take up those challenges out there? You will be independent. A person has to be independent. So here, the parents, like me, have to groom their children and make them ready to fit in any kind of an environment, any atmosphere any peer circle, they should be able to adapt that atmosphere and go on. There can be some fear factors, but here, as in Council Navy, it's, it's not only about counseling about the studies. We also try to sort it out. If a student is lacking behind somewhere, if they are frightened, if they want some kind of uh, mentoring or coaching so that they can step ahead, we are always there to help you. So nothing to worry about it. So are you ready for the changes? Yes, have the positive mind that, yes, I am ready, and we are there to be a backbone of yours. Next slide, please. So as uh, you all are aware, there are certain skills, uh, tests, certain examinations. So it also depends on the university. Uh, there are universities who are waiving IELTS and you know, TOEFL, PT and all. Uh, there are universities who is not looking for any kind of an examinations, a test skills at all, SAT, GET, nothing. But yes, to an extent, if it is required, that is why we say that you have to see the requirement first. You go through the requirement. What is the examination we have to give before we apply for the application? It should not be last minute. So when do you when you do the research, when you do the homework, please ensure that this should be in the priority list. It should not be a last moment that, oh my God, I have to do the IELTS exam. I have to clear the gate. No. You have to be prepared at least six months beforehand before you applying for any kind of. This is the first thing I prioritize. Okay. And also, there are validities. So I'll come to that validities as well. Like uh, Ashish has uh, you know, emphasized on European countries, I want to uh, also emphasize on that beside the languages, there are a couple of exams that is required. So even that falls in the, you know, like we say, Delft and DAF for the Deutsch, for the uh, French. Uh, this is very important. So there are students who have money, who have the other requirements, but they don't have any kind of a certifications in language. So they have to delay for another one year just to clear their A2 or at least B1. So this is, again, to be looked up to. And I'm sure, I mean, people here are aware of, uh, you know, uh, that US MLE, this is, uh, People ask me, who, those who are post-graduated post in a medicines field, they say that I want to move to uh, US. In that case, what is the criteria? So in 
every country they have their own priority and registration like in india also if somebody is coming from abroad they have to give their medical exams here as well in germany when i was there even the doctors were well qualified unless and until they give the exams in german they are not ready for the practice like that in us also they have some licensing uh, you know uh, exam which you have to clear so based on the countries it will be there so you choose your country we are there to sort it out for you we will guide you what next to be done yes ashish next yeah so uh, this is all i have already covered that you know you need to have uh, good uh, percentage in uh, like a good scholar but at the same time there are certain factors which you have to see about the requirements please keep that in mind requirement is something the last minute people run so I don't want that to happen. So academic percentage, yes, depending upon the board, if you are IB, IG, or even CBSC, ICSC, what is the minimum requirement? And for us, we do not accept any application below 60 to 65 percent. There is no point we giving you, uh, you know, uh, just a, a, a false commitment that we can do that. No, we are certified, and we don't do that. We will only take if you are in a good average mark of 60 to 65 percent then only we are going to take it over otherwise we won't skills test as i say that different countries have a different test so there are opportunities where it will be waived off then you are in a winning situation otherwise we will guide you which skill test you have to do for which country which university language proficiency we say that in german and all they are very particular about their languages german netherlands even Fran uh, france uh, uh, I mean, some countries like, you know, uh, Erlen and all, they are okay. They are okay with their language and English as a you know majority. So that's fine. So language proficiency, if required, yes, you have to do that. Professional experience is uh, referred to probably, you know, uh, somebody who is applying for um, master's or, you know, P MPhil, PhD, something like that. Uh, it is required because, as we say, for the student, it should be internship. In even you know class 11 and 12 of the IB board and in the IG board, uh, the students are compelled to do six months of internship at least, so that when they make their SOP, the statement of purpose, it gives a strong point, a brownie point. If you have an internship like that, a professional who is applying for a higher studies must have some professional experience to have a winning and open gate as easy as it is possible. Peer exposure is important again because. Once you step out from the house, you don't have a mom, dad to help you out, uncle, auntie to help you out at the time. You will have your team, you'll have your friends. So peer exposure, you should not be a silent creature. You should be amongst the group, amongst them to understand the thing. So we want our children to, uh, you know, uh, to be together with the other nationalities, other people in and around, uh, other genders, to be frank. I don't want them to be confined in one environment and when they step out, they should feel so lonely that they want to come back within six months. No, we have done our best. We have given so much of time and money and everything. We want our children to be at the best of the place. So peer exposure. Now, peer exposure doesn't mean uh, just, you know, to be in a workplace. Peer exposure is with the classmates, with the society where you are living. Must be you guys are having some get together in Japan as well. So how your children are mingling with the other children. That is also kind of a peer exposure we are looking at. So extracurricular or voluntary services. I urge that, you know, uh, rather I recommend very strongly that when a child is in class six or seven, please, please, you know, tell them what is the essence of voluntary service? What is there to do in our society? Smallest of the smallest thing, a parents has to groom and then step them out with the uh, like voluntary organizations, some NGOs that we have here, NGOs and I, INGOs. So I'm trying my best uh, for my daughter to be groomed in that uh, sector as well, because please understand for the Ivy Leagues or the best of the universities in the world, they are having students who are scoring more than 99% and one will be amongst you guys also. Your children is also 99%. So. 3% is the bracket, the Ivy League. Only 3% will get the admission. How they will you know, try to sort it out, that is a big job, big task for them as well. And your children, you want, uh, you have, because you're financially strong, everything is there. But then, 
whether you will get through that Ivy League university, is, uh, university or not depends upon all these extracurricular activities. I remember that there was a person who, you know, uh, have taken a break in, a, in their uh, academic uh, uh, after 12th, let's say, one year gap. And he, he was doing some voluntary services to understand the thing. And that experience has taken, taken him to another level of uh, going to uh, the best of the universities in the world. So from now, if we nurture them from when they are in class six, seven, if they join any voluntary organization, doing a voluntary services, this is another brownie point, which will look, which will have a weight on their SOPs. So this could be one of the biggest factor to get into the best of the universities. So this is what? Next slide, please. Yeah. As I mentioned, the uh, SOP, so I'm sure most of you know it as a statement of purpose. Rather, it will say that it is my mini autobiography where I'm writing just about me, my interest, and my mission and vision for a student. So here, uh, we always suggest that, you know, it needs to be very strong in the sense uh, that it is not a made up story. We don't want our child to write a story with, uh, you know, just that once upon a time, this, this is no, this is about me. Me as in how I have been, what is my interest, what is my strength, what is my weakness. If I know my weakness, have I improved you know, to overcome that weaknesses? So all these things have to be mentioned. Though people say that, ma'am, why do you want the weakness to be? It's not about weakness. Why are you looking at the weakness as a negative? My question is that. Why not that a child has overcome that weakness is a strong point of that child? There are many children who have the weakness, everyone has a weakness, and somebody just give up, and they can't make it through. So here, in SOP writing, we always guide them through, like, you know, what are their achievements in their schools, what are the programs they have attended, any reward and recognition, any voluntary services they have done, smallest of the smallest thing, we try to put it in the statement of purpose. And why I want to apply in that university, why? Why only that out of thousands of universities? Why there? And this, that university has to choose me again. Why? From me, why that university? From the university, why me? So in that perspective, we have to write the essay. So we actually guide them through it. And this SOP will give you, you know, the importance of the, that. It will give you personal insight. Uh, whether you have that uh, adaptability or not, are you capable, that potential is there in the student or not, uh, what is there, as I said, the outstanding factor of the student, why you, why, you know, why uh, Rashi, why Vivek, why you, that particular noun that I'm using, and of course, communication skills. My dear parents, my dear students, if you're listening to me, you may be excellent in everything, you may be excellent in hard skills. If you don't have soft skills, you are somewhere lacking behind. And soft skills, the main thing is communication skills. And in communication, the listening tops. That's the number one, the listening skills. So communication skills, when we talk about, go through, there are lots of YouTube videos. There are lots of courses. And we are there, Ashes, Prem, me. We are there to tell you what kind of a communication skills you need to have. Because try to understand. We as an Indian, we are here always, you know, we are brought up in a joint family. Even if not, we are in a nuclear family, but our vacations are with our joint families. Masi ke ghar jana hai, nani, dada, dada, that's a fun, that's the, that's Indian, like, I just love that. That is something missing outside. So here, communication skills, when you are abroad, probably you are in a nuclear family, where you can find, uh, you know, uh, environment you're not getting too much to talk about so here you lack in communication skills so you try to improve that communication skills there are courses please go through it because this is also will have one brownie point when you will write sop what have you done in communication any award any stage show any performance any recognitions next please so this, as I have explained very briefly in the other, you can understand why it is as the you know, strategy and why it is very important to have an effective uh, SOPs. Uh, you have to write the stories, but as I said, the stories doesn't mean once upon a time, it is a story about you. Be very specific, very particular about your wins and loss and how you overcome, why that college, why you are interested, what you are good at, what you want to be. So you need to be a visionary here, a thoughtful leader as a student. 
That's what I will emphasize on. You have to essay, you have to write the essay according to your customization. You tell it, your mama, your papa will not say. Either my friends, my colleagues, my everyone, I suggest that you don't help out. You can just review, but don't help out. Tell them to put in their word there and then. Once they have done it, then you go through the editing and reviewing and try to rectify you know, where it is missing, what is missing. So take out good amount of time. People take 30 days to write SOPs also. They are preparing. So I would say rather prepare when you are in class 12. As soon as in class 12, you start your SOP. Do review it, edit it, review it, edit it. Ask help from your parents, from your friends. You know, tell them to mark you out of 10, how much like in IELTS and all we do scoring. So tell them to do that. Monitor, monitor, monitor. Just go through it, go through it, go through it. And finally, when it is all done, when you'll be in touch with your counselor, your counselor will review and give you advice. Your mentor will help you to take it further. That will be an effective SOP. Next, please. Yeah, so this is very important. How to shortlist a university. Thousands of universities. So best of the best, how we will do. Obviously, people look for... Uh, QS uh, ranking, that uh, Coaquerely uh, Siemens ranking, which does that uh, world university ranking. So you need to see that according to your percentage, according to your potential, according to your financial status and your program, you can choose your universities according to that. The, the quality of the campus, obviously, when we shift from one place to one another place, we check out the location, the house, what are the facilities in and around. Those places you have to see. Because when you'll be out of touch from your parents for so long, two, three years, uh, you need to have that good, safe environment out there. So you need to see the locations, the locality in and out. And what is the percentage of the students coming from which country? Even that matters a lot. So which country the other students are coming from? So that country's history is also very important. How are the people out there? So, so that you are aware what kind of a characteristic that individual I'll be meeting up when I go there. So there's a lots of homework. Now you can understand study abroad is not easy. It's not only about just applications, applying and getting through. It's about mental preparation. It is about whole through mentoring, mentoring, mentoring. Counseling comes bohat baad mein. It's all about mentoring, mentoring, preparing, mindset changes, and you are fit to go in there. So location, campus, university, then you will see if there is any kind of a job placement. I know that uh, many of the university does, uh, you know, offer uh, placement, but that's very short term, very short term. But then, yes, the benefit is that even if you have a short term, you can at least have the time to go in and around and to do your research work, which company is good. Once I finish this course, will I be able to settle down there? Can I apply or not? Go through it. You know, you pay a visit to that particular organization and check it out if there is something. What are the requirements? Prerequisite. Always make your mind for that. You know, you have to do the search, research, research, research. So job placement, do not rely on the university fully. Rather, if ever, any university is giving you internship, that is well and good. And you will have ample amount of time to do your own research and look for the job. Okay, so cost, etc. Cost is always there because <laughs> we know how the inflation is hitting up. So cost is always keep in your mind. And uh, if you get any internship which who, who is paying you a good stipend, accept it. And for that also, you need to be aware that you are not only the one in the red race. There are many. You have to be excellent out there. Next. So here, standard documents. Yes, you need to know which all documents are required. Obviously, the passport is the first thing. And the validity, as it says, passport valid for at least six months after applications. So the validity should be good enough. It should mean not a last minute rush thing. So passport is the first thing. Your academic documents, like your certificate of you know, 10, 12, whatever is required, your um, the skill sets, the, the, the diplomas or any kind of a test that you have given, even those documents as well. And for many countries, it is important to have it being translated, a transcript. So when in Germany I went, we have to do all this transcription. And it took too much of time, I'm telling you. 
So be prepared if you are going to some countries which they have a dominancy of their national native language, then it's better to, you know, go through that uh, professional uh, transcript writer who will just convert all these things and help you out. So LORs, just letter of reference. Three letter of uh, reference is required, but few university accept uh, two also. That depends on the university. So you may check on that, how many LORs there one. It's a letter of reference from your, uh, probably if you are doing an internship, it's always better to have a LOR from them as well. If it is a college, school and all, from your professor, from your head of the department. So this letter of reference is also very important to get through the admission process. SOP is already there, we have discussed. Your resume, resume if somebody is going for higher studies, resume is nothing but just a you know introduction of yours, your experience, your educational, your uh, hobbies and all to be there. Resume in a very uh, short format is required because SOP will contain everything. So resume uh, will have a weightage which will give a personal information more like that. Work-related documents if employed. Uh, here, Ashis, are we also uh, you know emphasizing on the documents of the parents? Yeah, maybe we need to convey because for the applications, uh, mm -hmm. there are these financial documents are needed, for example, yes. statements, tax certificates, and so yeah. on, uh, which yeah. is actually asked. So, work related document in this context uh, might be parents as well as if uh, a student has done some kind of a anything like going for post graduation than if any job is done or not right right and even these documents are important for the loan as well right if somebody is applying for the loan the bank will always ask for that so language and skill test we have always uh, already discussed about that and the other documents as per the university as per the country uh, we are there to sort it out to give you all the information whatever is required once you decide upon your universities and all and the program so financial, as it says, that depends on the country applying for. So what are the financial documents needed? And again, as I said, this is a long procedure and it depends on the uh, countries to countries. We'll give more information when it is required. Nothing to worry about it. Yeah. So uh, this is uh, on Council Navy uh, platform. If somebody wants to get in touch with me one on one, oh, you are most welcome to do that. Uh, if somebody wants to uh, come back to India, um, India is again, you know, a hub of education. I love India. The education is academic is really good after going through, you know, so many countries and also lots of you know, study abroad program. I think that India is also one of the best place you can consider for the higher studies of your, uh, your, your kids and kids. And we are here to help you out. Uh, any country rather we are focusing today on us canada australia and uk other than that also we have many countries uh, and that will be on one and one if you want we will assist you further please feel free uh, to get in touch with me to ashes and prem we are there uh, we will sort it out no worries so uh, that's all from my end thank you so much i'm sure it is a, a, a brief uh, but Yes, whatever information at the initial stage is required, I have covered all. Apart from that, you can park your question, you can email me, you can get in touch with me through Council Nebi. Thank you. Over to you, Ashish. Yeah, maybe Prem, if you want to take it forward. Sure. sure. Thank you very much, Jimmy and Ashish, for giving that overview. Uh, since we have a few minutes, uh, if there are any comments, feedbacks, from the audience, uh, we would love to have it. Uh, if there are any generic questions pertainable to everyone, not just uh, for just your uh, uh, kid, that would be really good if there is some generic one. You can raise your hand and then maybe we can take that comment or feedback. If we don't have any questions, maybe I have a query for uh, Jimmy there. Uh, Jimmy, you have uh, covered uh, the whole scenario in a wonderful way. Just also wanted to understand trends, uh, like what streams are being opted more uh, by kids uh, when they are applying for overseas courses, if you can just share some thoughts on that one. Uh, as far as my knowledge now, apart from all those, you know, uh, conventional, uh, the courses available, nowadays kids are very interested in architecture. 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 Uh, this in finance, as you are from finance, this actuarial, 
right so yeah. this is uh, again one uh, application that i got um management yes business management uh business management not exactly see here was the challenge which i faced a person wants to do business management and uh, the particular subject that uh, she is looking into that required mathematics but she did not have mathematics so what instead of that something relatable to that so that was a you know very big challenge for me to sort it out which i did so uh, actuarial was one uh, liberal arts hmm. there was nothing like liberal arts, arts yeah. earlier I mean, so liberal arts uh, microbiology you know uh, uh, organic uh, chemistry i mean these are very rare but people are coming people are coming anything to do with the uh, organic things people are coming that's what i see anything to do with the research mm -hmm. people are happy to go Okay. And yes, in management, um, marketing and advertising have a good hands-on branding, which you say a branding. Uh, they are very, very much focused with the branding. And of course, uh, there are medical students as well. Medical is a big thing again, uh, you know, nursing and medical. We have taken up that as well. So mainly liberal in finance. Uh, this uh, actuarial has come up with me. Uh, liberal arts actuarials and this architect okay and yeah so this these are new new genre new uh what uh, the interest that uh, children are having these days yeah got it got it thank you very much uh jimmy uh we are also getting some questions on the chat i can see one hand up uh, i'll start who has posted first here uh first one is re related to Japan bank education loan process. I would say this is quite a particular question. Uh, so we will park it uh, for now. I'll go to the next one uh, that uh, it's regarding volunteering activities that kids shall start. Uh, will you please guide what are the options available and how to approach? Uh, in, in a very brief uh, answer, can we find here, Jigna? Uh, yes. Uh, see, I don't know about the culture in Japan. Uh, if you are talking about particularly Japan, then you guys are the good, uh, you know, uh, mentor to guide here. But in India, as I'm in, I'm based in Bangalore, and it is also a new city for me. I'm trying to in connect with the nearby, you know, uh, small small NGOs. So I search from the Google, and I try to reach out. So I also ask them, you know, if we can give, you know, four to five students who can help you, what kind of assistant you want. And like that, we groom our children, what kind of assistant they have to give there. So it could be, you know, small, just making them reading A, B, C, D, primary educations. So our children are good enough to give that education. Got it. So that is also a good start. Got it. Uh, and if, yeah. Yeah, Shish, please go ahead. Yeah, Shish. And I'll just add to that. Uh, I think uh, even in Japan, if you talk to your school teachers, they will provide you a lot of options. Like uh, sometimes uh, you can teach uh, junior students when you are in say 11th or 12th. Those are the options. Secondly, there are a lot of online internships available uh, for you to connect and go through that. Also, uh, there, there are a lot of social programs happening around which you can join and uh, conduct. Uh, moreover, uh, all boils down to the how it uh, fits into your SOP because that actually highlights like if you have gone for some social kind of a service program three four days or uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, teaching you have done or some kind of online internship you have done so all these options are available best is to talk to the uh, classroom teacher and they certainly can uh, provide that information also uh, uh, you should encourage your kids to talk among among friends and uh, they can uh, also connect with the different kind of uh, programs like that. Thank so you, uh, here only uh, one more thing, along with this uh, voluntary service uh, to enhance their communication skills also, the society that you are living in, if you have you know good amount of senior students, like say 10 students and a good amount of junior students, so the senior students can uh, you know, be a good mentor to them in the society itself. They don't have to step out, but you need to have the recordings you know, the, the credentials, when you put it in SOP, you need to have the photo shoots, the videos and all to prove that, yes, we have done that along with the voluntary services outside okay. your community. That could be also one of the effective way. Yeah. Okay. So, Jimmy, it, it doesn't have to be necessarily a certificate, but any kind of media which proves yeah, that we so, have done social that. Media, yes, it is, it is relevant now. Social media is accepted. These days. Yes, yeah. Thank you very much. So, we have limited time. I'll just ask uh, first Abhishek and then Hemant both one by one raise the question and then we'll try to address those two questions uh, right away after that one. Abhishek, please go ahead. 
Sure, thanks, thanks, Prem. Uh, uh, so, Jimmy, I I just posted the question in the chat as well. So, uh, want to know like what is the scope for archaeology? That's the first part of my question. The second uh, is uh, as as you mentioned, like the countries, the, there are various countries as, as an option. Of course, like we need to uh, bet on various criteria like the cost and safety and all those things. But uh, India definitely is, is looks to be a very good option. Uh, Having said that, India is very vast, and so would like to know, like, what which universities um, are are good and safe uh, for kids to uh, stay alone in India for architecture. Okay, uh, architecture again. Uh, if we talk about uh, archaeology, basically archaeology. Uh, uh, sorry, you... sorry, so, sorry to confuse. So, archaeology and architecture. I have two questions. Yeah, okay. so there are two streams he has asked. Yeah, two streams, uh, exactly. Jimmy. Uh, yeah. Jimmy, sorry, before you answer, I want to take one more question from Hemant and then we'll address both the sure. answers. Sure. Hemant, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks. Uh, maybe I joined a bit late. So I had uh, two questions for Jimmy. Uh, one is uh, for uh, whether do you offer services for applying for masters also? Uh, that is one. And uh, second is uh, in terms of uh, undergraduation. Uh, are there any universities outside uh, Japan which kind of offer uh, scholarships also? Yes, yes. For both, first thing, I'll come for Abhishek. Abhishek, this uh, archaeology, again, uh, India is one of the best for archaeology, I would say. And we have a couple of, uh, you know, best of the universities here, which I have to go through the list. We can provide you, get in touch with me. I'll do that for you. And architecture, yes, along with India, uh, we have architecture, US and UK, two applications I have submitted this time. And that is also not, uh, not a big number, I would say. There were only uh, three good universities that uh, I came across. And there we have put that uh, application. So yes, US and UK for architecture, I have done. For archaeology, India has good option, which I can provide to you. Nothing to worry about it. Um, for the masters, yes, we do apply for the masters. And uh, there are many universities. Right now, also, a couple of openings are there for masters. And undergrads, uh, for the undergrads, scholarship is very less. Masters, I have seen many, but undergrads, uh, very few. And uh, we can always uh, check if the university is providing. Uh, very recently, UK provided one uh, scholarship for uh, undergrads program. Uh, we can share that with you. So uh, nothing to worry about. Uh, just get in touch with me. That's what I want to say, because these are you know certain things that I need to browse through many things, then guide you. I don't want to give you anything you know false here so certainly we are there to help you out just reach out to me we'll do that yeah i'll share the contacts of uh jimmy which she shared earlier uh just uh this thing heads up last five minutes before we start uh concluding i have seen one more question from sandeep uh who is also a uh, founder of this group also uh what are the charges for career navigators for the whole process from start to finish it's a very broad question i guess Sandeep, I think uh, you can take it uh, one to one. Uh, I'll share the uh, details of Jimmy and she shared earlier in the presentation. Uh, Jimmy, if you want to add something to give an idea on that one. Mm, that again depends, you know, yeah. it's a very vast that the person which what is the program, what university, how much time will be required, what are the preparation required? So all this. Yeah. But yes, I'm sure uh, this will be much cheaper than what you are paying out there. I'm sure about it. <laughs> yeah, that you can rely on us. Yeah. OK. Uh, uh, to add one thing here because i have seen something trend coming up specifically in india uh, that uh, you don't pay and uh, we will just do it for you and then uh, in the back like uh, universities are paying to the counselors i think you need to understand one thing nothing is free in this world and if somebody is offering free that means there is a background track <laughs> now, i'll tell you very clearly because i am deep into this now uh, with my I did certification. I spoke to almost more than 150 counselors so far. Also spoken with many institute owners. And there I understood that if you are going for, for free service, then you will be diverted towards where they want you to take, yeah. like where, where they will take you, where they get benefit. So it's not open for your choices or good universities. You might miss a lot just for some free bucks. So just be aware. Be careful. Don't run for free. If someone is charging you, then they are taking a lot of efforts for you and they will guide you. I have seen parents spending a lot of money and getting real good universities. They are not running behind free stuff. So be aware of that. I think this is a good forum. 
i would like to share this message very clearly and uh, also on top of that uh, when you are paying you have every right to you know ask uh, as much as information and there is no way that the counselor will uh, be fooled you in that case and also if the counselor is not charging you now there are hidden costs yes ashish where you were supposed to spend only 1.5 you will be sharing somewhere on 5 to 6 lakhs i'm sure about it please don't do that don't do that be aware of it okay as we are certified we are committed and this is our work ethic we will never do that yeah thank you jimmy i'll take one last uh, question or comment from sita abhishek you have already asked so maybe we can take it offline you are connected into the group so we can take it there sita please go ahead yeah hi jimmy uh, so my question to you is that uh, a child doing ibdp curriculum uh, do you think it is um, good for him or her to do under graduation in india uh, hi Sita, yeah, uh, hi. Uh, see, Sita, it, nothing is, uh, you know, good or bad here. It all mm -hmm. depends on uh, the child's potential, the child's adaptability, the child's program. Yes, what he or she is looking into, if the child is getting in India and the best of the college in India, why not? Why not? That is what, right? Okay. So, uh, Sita, feel free to contact me. I understand what is your question. Uh, please get in touch with me. I'm there to sort it out for you. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, anytime. <laughs> okay, great. I think we are doing great on the time. Uh, so I think uh, let's start concluding uh, this uh, vibrant session. First of all, again, I'll thank Ashish and Jimmy for sharing the insights, which are really useful for the kids when they are really preparing for these admissions. And then I would like to also thank all the participants and people who have really asked uh, this question proactively and kind of started this discussion. So what, what is our aim of uh, having the discussions on this as a parent is to really get started and start thinking about uh, what we we'll really need in terms of uh, when we are applying for admissions for our kids. So uh, continue this discussion in the WhatsApp group for this session, which we have made. Also in the main group, uh, which is for kids NRI education, uh, ask those questions, help, uh, help us out each other. And if you need some professional advice, we are the, the one of the aim of this session was also that we also have that support system. This is one of the forum where we got uh, the experts which are uh, focusing uh, in the admissions outside of Japan. But there are other experts also. We will continue this discussion. We will also talk and bring more discussion when we have parents' views also on this, as we have done for uh, Japan universities. So please continue this discussion and start uh, participating in this discussion proactively the way you have been. So with those uh, final words, uh, if Ashish, you have something to wrap up, otherwise we will conclude the session. I think this is a nice session, good session. Thanks to thanks thanks to you, Prem, for uh, kind of uh, driving this throughout, and thanks Jimmy uh, for the, all the inputs and uh, sharing, uh, like giving your time for uh, such a valuable uh, insights and uh, uh, explanations. So, and thanks everyone for showing so much of interest. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you everyone. So we conclude this session. Thank you for all participation. Right.